This is the world that you know. The world as it was at the end of the 20th century. It exists now only as part of a neural interactive simulation that we call the Matrix. You've been living in a dream world, Neo. This is the world as it exists today. Welcome to the desert of the real. The Matrix, one of the most influential movie franchises ever created. I personally love the movies, for many reasons, mainly due to the fact that uh, they constitute an unparalleled uh, synthesis of sci-fi, action and engrossing narrative, but also due to the interesting philosophies echoed throughout the movies. The Wachowskis have managed to bring together ideas from different philosophers and psychologists and create an extraordinary work of art. We seem as enthralled now by their meaning as ever, and they continue to be sprinkled liberally across popular culture. This video is my attempt to reveal these ideas and give to the movies the obvious credit they deserve. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. The predominant idea of the movies is obviously that of uh, the truth. The red pill and the blue pill symbolize truth and ignorance, uh, respectively. This idea derives from the famous allegory of the cave that can be found in Plato's uh, Republic. In the allegory, some people are imprisoned inside a cave, and the only thing they can see is uh, shadows projected in the walls in front of them. At some point, uh, one prisoner somehow escapes and gains access to the outer world, which symbolizes the absolute truth, which is quite abstract, but in short, one can define this truth as uh, the truth disengaged from illusions, delusions, propaganda, lies and absurdities. In the Matrix, uh, the truth is that uh, the machines are using the humans as energy source and have created the Matrix to keep them occupied while they are in pods, acting as human batteries. Our fight to discover the truth about everything is an omnipresent fight. In the Matrix, this fight is represented in the fight against the machines, but also in the fight to deny the comfort of the Matrix and accept a reality that is more difficult, but also more real, so to speak. The notion of the One alludes to the idea of the Messiah, which is prevalent in most popular religions. Neo is pure, determined, uh, smart, capable and willing to risk uh, his life to save humanity. He represents the perfect Messiah archetype. People can't operate without guidance and without archetypes. It is a necessity nested deep in our social fabric. Without figures to guide us, uh, represent us and motivate us, we feel lost and uh, disorganized. Neo is the savior people need in order to move forward and master the cars required to fight against the machines. I know you can hear me, but I'm not letting go. I can't. I love you too damn much.
Love is the ultimate feeling and this is highlighted uh, throughout the movies with the relationship between Neo and uh, Trinity. They fell in love with each other and they would do anything to protect each other. In Matrix uh, Resurrections, uh, this love goes one step further and it becomes an us-against-the-world theme. Neo and Trinity are not just lovers anymore, they are partners in crime. But their romantic relationship is not the only one that uh, stands out. Merovingian's love uh, with uh, Persephone is also special. It symbolizes the declining nature of uh, modern romantic relationships and how nostalgia can uh, lead to revenge and eventually destroy a relationship. I am so sick and tired of this bullshit. On and on. Pompous prick. A long time ago, when we first came here, it was so different. He was so different. He was like you. When Neo manages to maintain his powers in the real world, he essentially manages to transcend his self. I have said before that uh, self-transcendence is the answer to every question you might seek that is connected to your search for inner purpose and balance. Self-transcendence is the core vision every human ought to have in order to explain his or her role in this world. Whether this is manifested uh, via a religious approach, a spiritual approach or a materialist approach is not of importance. Self-transcendence is the end goal for humanity. In the movie, this is the prevailing idea. Neo transcends himself and becomes a superhuman outside the Matrix. I guess this is achieved through singularity, so the directors uh, chose to express that through a materialist approach and uh, urge us to become more sanguine about the future connection between humanity and the machines. Hello, Neo. Who are you? I am the architect. I created the Matrix. I've been waiting for you. You have many questions, and though the process has altered your consciousness, you remain irrevocably human. Ergo, some of my answers you will understand, and some of them you will not. Concordantly, while your first question may be the most pertinent, you may or may not realize it is also the most irrelevant. Why am I here? Your life is the sum of a remainder of an unbalanced equation inherent to the programming of the Matrix. You are the eventuality of an anomaly which, despite my sincerest efforts, I have been unable to eliminate from what is otherwise a harmony of mathematical precision. This is undoubtedly my favorite scene from the movie. The architect is a program framed as the creator of the Matrix. The machines made him look extremely intelligent and eloquent so he can be perceived as the most sophisticated virtual representation of the entire machine uh, mainframe. As he explains, the current Matrix reality is the sixth iteration, meaning that the Matrix gets reloaded every time the Neo anomaly attempts to liberate humans. This is an allusion to Nietzsche's concept of the eternal uh, recurrence. One of the most uh, discussed appearances of eternal recurrence in Nietzsche's work is uh, section 341 in the Gay Science, The Greatest Weight. What if some day or night a demon were to steal after you into your loneliest loneliness and say to you, this life as you now live it and have lived it, you will have to live once more and innumerable times more. And there will be nothing new in it, but every pain and every joy and every thought and sigh and everything unutterably small or great in your life will have to return to you, all in the same succession and sequence. Would you not throw yourself down and gnash your teeth and curse the demon who spoke thus? Or have you once experienced the tremendous moment when you would have answered him, You are a god, and never have I heard anything more divine. We're trapped in a reality where every perceptual pattern repeats itself uh, perpetually. This uh, Sisyphean concept is haunting our lives and we're trapped in a lucid dream inundated by repetitions and déjà vus. The Matrix uh, reminds us that in the most eloquent way possible.
It is known that the Wachowskis uh, asked the actors to read uh, Jean Baudrillard's uh, book Simulacra and Simulation, published in 1983. A simulacrum, Latin for likeness, uh, semblance, is a representation or imitation of a person or thing. In the book, uh, Baudrillard uh, uses the term as a way of uh, critiquing contemporary culture and the way we perceive uh, what is real. He writes, We will live in this world, uh, which for us has all the disquieting strangeness of the desert and of the simulacrum, with all the veracity of living phantoms, of wandering and simulating animals, that capital, that the death of the capital has made us. Because the desert of cities is equal to the desert of sand, the jungle of science is equal to that of uh, the forests, the vertigo of simulacra is equal to that of nature, Only the vertiginous seduction of a dying system remains, in which work bears work, in which value bears value. A good reads, uh, reader uh, explains his work nicely. He wants to make it clear that our world itself is a simulacrum, that all of the institutions we hold as the foundations of our understanding of how the world uh, works are, in essence, not real. As he says early in the book, uh, it is dangerous to unmask images, since they dissimulate the fact that there is nothing behind them. Simulacra and simulation is a very difficult but deep read. Sometimes uh, Botrilla uses a more complex language uh, than needed, but uh, his points can be quite eye-opening if read carefully. An interesting fact is that uh, Botrilla didn't really enjoy The Matrix. In an interview with the French magazine Le Nouvel Observateur, he says, What is notable about Matrix Reloaded is the absence of a glimmer of irony that would allow viewers to turn this gigantic special effect on its head. Moreover, this is what makes the film an instructive symptom, and the actual fetish of this universe of technologies of the screen in which there is no longer a distinction between the real and the imaginary. The Matrix is considered to be an extravagant object, at once candid and perverse, where there is neither a here nor a there. Basically, its dissemination on a world scale is complicit with the film itself. On this point, it is worth recalling Marshall McLuhan, The Medium is the Message. The message of The Matrix is its own diffusion by an uncontrollable and proliferating contamination. What he means is that The Matrix is uh, presented as a critique of the system which ironically massively promotes it and that the directors never did their own self-critique within the movies. You are here because you were sent here. You were told to come here and then you obeyed. (laughs) It is, of course, the way of all things. You see, there is only one constant. One universal, it is the only real truth. Causality. Action, reaction. Cause and effect. Everything begins with choice. No, wrong. Choice is an illusion created between those with power and those without. Free will couldn't be left out of the Matrix narrative. Human behavior and the way we react to external manipulation render us more or less incapable of exercising the idea of free will. In the movies, uh, the machines are taking advantage of this and foist on humans a nearly perfect reality so they can exploit them as an energy source. Whether free will exists or not is uh, difficult to corroborate. Neo constitutes an anomaly in the Matrix system and through his anomalous nature we become more aware of the choices we can make as humans. We see in Neo everything we are but also everything we can become. We struggle, we hate, we love, we enjoy, we resist, we fight back. Every behavior we change is like an anomaly for the system. Some we enjoy, some we don't. But at least everything we do is our choice. Maybe. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, turn on notifications and comment below something cool please so that more people can discover it. Uh, If you want to watch more videos from my channel, check out this one and this one. Take care, see you soon. Adrian out.